Hello P3 Nation and welcome back. I want to share today a really cool technique that I learned um, and a kind of an inventive way to use conditional formatting based off of a recent update that they had in Power BI. Now if we look at the report in front of us and specifically we look at that matrix table that's over here on the left, do you notice kind of the, the color formatting that's being applied to the amounts? It's not a color scale or anything else. It's kind of a clear call out of a specific color and uh, for a very specific number of rows. And if we actually dig into it a little bit and see which rows are being colored, we'll notice that they're being colored based off of the travel type. The travel type has four distinct categories. There is air, car, hotel, and further down in the list, there's also some rail um, as well. This, think of this as just a mock-up of a, an expense report with some kind of a category that's breaking out my data right now. Uh, and in this example, it's travel type. But air is getting colored a light blue, car expenses get colored green, hotel gets colored purple, and so on. And what I figured out essentially using some clever DAX formulas, I'm able to look at any text category, determine if there's a single value present, and if there is, color the associated amount or whatever output it is based off of the, the travel type or any other category you would want to use. So what I'd like to do today is to walk you through exactly how to get this done and that way we can uh, apply this ourselves and really just create one DAX calculation to do this. All right, let's get started. All right. Now what I have in front of us is the same workbook as before, but without that conditional formatting applied it or that DAX calculation created. Now what I want to do is I'm going to do it as step one is I'm going to create a DAX calculation that converts my travel types, whether or not it's air, car, hotel, or rail, and I'm going to convert that to a number value. So I'm going to go up to DAX measures, I'm going to select new measure, and you'll see where we're, it's going to make a little bit more sense of why I'm converting this to a number as soon as we get to the conditional formatting section. But uh, this is an important step to do here. So I'm going to call this travel type number. Now this is going to do a, a, um, a lookup four different times because we have air, car, hotel, and rail. That's four different categories. Now I don't want to have it um, run a calculation four times. So variables come into play in this calculation like they do in a lot of others and in some other videos that I mentioned. So I'm going to clear a variable and specifically I'm going to call this travel type and that's going to use a function called selected values. Now what selected values does is it looks and determines is there a single value being shown at any point and if there is a single value being shown return that value otherwise return an alternative result. So I want it to look at the travel value column and if there is a single value, return that text. Otherwise, return blank. And uh, automatically will return blank if I don't provide an alternative result. So I'm just going to close the parentheses. Type return to close off my variable section. And now I can use a nested if statement or uh, the also known as the switch true statement in DAX. Case win in SQL. So switch true. Rob's written a great post on this in the past. Now I can reference that variable that I just wrote. Travel type, travel type equals air. I'm going to convert that to a one. And don't forget the comma. If travel type equals car, that's two. Travel type equals hotel, that's three. And last but not least, if travel type equals rail and that's four and then I can go ahead and close the come on close the parentheses hit enter beautiful now we have this stack calculation in here all right now the next step I'm gonna click on my matrix table there we are I'm gonna go down to values I'm going to navigate to that conditional formatting section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up the font color scales right here. Now what we have the option to do is we can apply the color to the amount, which is what's visible and showing in my matrix table. But I want to do color based on, and I want to do that based off of that calculation that I just wrote, which is travel type number. Now the reason that I did that is because this color based on has to be a number. Like there's, there's no way for me to do color based on a text output from DAX. The DAX needs to be uh, returning some kind of a scalar value. 
So that's why I converted those text fields from travel type into a number here. So travel type number. And I'm going to select color by rules. And now I can say if value is one, color it, let's color that red, which is the, the air. If value is two, which is my car, I'm going to go ahead and color that. You know, let's give that a green color. I'm just going to give it some arbitrary uh, colors that are distinguished from each other for, for this exercise. If it's three, gonna, let's pick a blue, light blue. There you go. And finally, if it's four, which is the rail, I will give it a purple color. There you go. So it's four distinguishing colors based off of the travel type category. Let's hit OK and see what happens. There we go. Now, as you can see, it's color coded the values in my table based off of these four outputs. And this works at any level. That's the beautiful thing with this conditional formatting is it's working all the way down to the specific dates under each city from the airline or the supplier travel type and name. So like this expense report all the way at its lowest granularity works. As I drill up, it's still working. It's still working at the destination city level, still working at the supplier level. It still works at the travel type level. Now here's kind of where the, the, the some of the um, unique attributes of it come into play. And I think which what, uh, part of what makes it really dynamic. If I drill up one more time, there we are. Notice that some for some of them, if there are more than uh, one travel type in any of them. So Clark, Clark Kent, he had multiple types of expenses. He had car, hotel, and rail. So as soon as I go up, it's no longer given a color anymore because it, it has multiple ty uh, travel types in it. As long as it has two or more, it will not get colored. It will only have the color formatting applied if there is only one travel type associated with that amount. So it will never incorrectly color. So we can know Tony Stark, he only ever had air. There was no other travel expenses for him. So it's still applying formatting correctly. Same with Jane Doe. But the rest of them had that removed because they had other travel expenses that are now been rolled up together. So the conditional formatting no longer applies. Put that back down to the thing and uh, you know it's it's one way that i think can really help call out the information help people find the information that they need to see faster and to show the alignment of the breakouts for whatever ca textual category you might want so hopefully that was informative for you i found it a very useful feature to have based on a specific client requirement that i needed on a project um, and with that i will see you in our next video